I'm listening to the music, the kind that makes you feel good about feeling bad. It makes the lows high and everything turns on inside. You can feel the switch, the lights of the city getting closer, the breaths getting deeper, the thoughts turning into action, the action turning into atmosphere. We own this town, but we didn't have to spend a dime. The liquid girls that spill out onto the streets, the guys like signposts handing out directions without being asked, and the laughter that's drawn on our faces, watercolors that spill across the table. You said you could tell my fortune by looking at someone else's palm. <laughs> That's from Leonard. Total rip off of the talk. Without knowing it. So, this book is uh, for sale back there, and SF Weekly was nice enough to make it their summer book pick, along with Michelle T. Yeah. and Rachel Kushner and a bunch of other really good people. This is the very beginning. It's uh, kind of retelling a Gatsby via social network. Even if you never heard a gun go off before, you wouldn't mistake it. A rush of wind and blood, the sound of an impact more than the impact itself. People hear a car backfire and they startle, thinking, was that a gunshot? But nobody ever hears a real gunshot and says, was that a car? <laughs> you just know. Bang! It's an explosive guttural sound that comes from a place so deep I'm afraid to think about its origins. It's the most unpredictable sound I've ever heard, and it has an unpredictable effect. I spring into action. I'm off my feet and in the air, hurling towards the shooter before I can say to myself, Duck, you idiot. <laughs> Just to be clear, <laughs> this is not something I'd ever imagine I would do. Not that being in a situation where I'd be hurling towards someone holding a gun ever occurred to me. I just wasn't the one who'd stick up for the kid getting beat up. I was the one who'd run and hide where I'd be next. But in the context of the summer, I guess you could say the unexpected is exactly what you'd expect. It's fitting, really, that I'd be the one that somehow ends up getting caught in the crossfire in the middle of this war of the houses that I happily participated in, maybe even instigated. And here I am, 17-year-old Charlie Middle, in the role of Mercutio, five feet away and closing in on the familiar shape whose hand's on the trigger. I brace for the impact and try to tell myself to relax. I'm probably already dead. But the impact never comes. I unclench my body and open my eyes that seem to be frozen in midair. There's no noise. It's not that it's quiet. In fact, I'm sure there are all screams and groans and all sorts of chaos, but the sound is missing for me, like it's been taken. My eyes alternate. I stare down the eyes of the shooter, then the barrel of the gun that's pointed right at me, then those eyes again. I could swim in those eyes. They're so big and shocked. Regardless of how this works out, I'll know they didn't mean to kill me, for whatever that's worth. As if on cue, time lets go of the arrow it's drawn. My velocity returns. The inevitable impact comes, and with it, another bang, a flash, and a sudden, permanent pain. The sky looks like a freshly paved road. Lying on my back in the grove behind my cousin Maisie's house, I still hear the gunshot ringing through the trees. Maybe it's been minutes, seconds. Maybe even less. I look up from the patch of earth I occupy and I think about the cost of real estate beneath me. It's more than I have in my savings account, more than my parents have in theirs, including my college fund. I can't feel my legs. I hear Joss scream for Maisie. It's the most awful sound. The sound of a heart breaking. I lay there, unable to move. Where are the stars? I mumble as everything goes dark. Thanks. Yeah.